You're getting punched. Ellis. <laughs> Jay Leno. My name is James Rugburn, co-owner of Pine Vinyl, and I'm going to teach you how to drive. It's really easy, but before we hit the open road, I thought I'd show off some of my homemade gear inside. Uh, I thought it would be a little safer um, to uh, do it to do it here, so check it out. Look, it's a steering wheel made out of a record. Uh, the gas is a Kleenex box. We've got a cool plunger on a trash can. That'll be our shifter. Oh, cool car, man. You got a digital clock? Hey, Carla. Um, I brought you here to this park because it's our one month anniversary and I just wanted to, I just wanted to say something to you if you don't mind. Oh, go for it. Um, I've been thinking a lot about you. Um, every time I hear that Maroon 5 song. I love that. It makes me know that... Just say it. Carla, I love you. Oh my gosh, DJ, I love you too. And a sweet boom box with like a, the tables like the uh, glove compartment. All right. Driving's real easy. And I can basically show you how to do it in, in one step. Get off your fucking phone. Because I love you so much, I got you a gift. I hope you enjoy it. Uh... They're called butt beads. They're for your butt. So what, she dumped you again? I got her that gift you told me to give her, and then she dumped me. Well, that just means she's not the one. Well, that was the bank. They said if we don't come up with $160,000 by Friday, we're out of business. Time to initiate the plan. Ellis, let's write a hit song. Go. Cool. We're paddling, paddling, we're paddling, we're paddling, we're drinking, we're drinking, we're drinking, we're sitting on the stove, we're going the block, down the block, we're going down the block, we're good. Top time, we're all hit top time, we're gonna come around, we're gonna swing back, we're gonna paddle. We're drinking, we're paddling out, we're drinking, this is the greatest night of my life. <laughs> You're under arrest. Worth it. What's that supposed to mean? It doesn't mean anything. Anyway, you're half white. What did you say? I said you're half white. That's a fact. Your dad's white. Your mom's black. I told you not to say that word. What word? Half? I can't say the word half. No, you said the M word. What the hell is the M word? You know goddamn well what you said. Are you talking about the word mulatto? Oh, there it is again. You love that word. Keep saying it. I didn't even say it. And is that word even that bad? I mean, I thought that's just literally what it meant. I wasn't calling you the M word. And side note, I didn't even say it in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I probably didn't. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, you are wrong. What were we talking about anyway? Oh, right. God damn it! You got a new boy coming in high. But you are the girl that I'm dreaming of. Nothing will give me greater satisfaction than watching you, Chris Brown, get rocked in the face. <laughs>
They're called your bows, and those aren't your bows. Those are Wranglers. I thought you might say that. Well, this is what happens. Well, how's that Dayton's? And they're just too expensive, Jimmy Jam. Those are just like $150 for a little loop and a little tag. Come on. So this is what I did. I got you a nice pair of Wranglers, and I put a little loopy on it, and I sewed a little patch on it. They're too stiff, Mom. Everyone makes fun of me. Oh, no. Who would make fun of Jimmy Jam? <laughs> do the math here. Uh, congratulations on your hit. Um, you guys have Pandora earnings. We'll add Spotify profit sharing, YouTube ad revenue, uh, television licensing, and you have a grand total of $68.72. Fuck me. Alright, Alice, plan B. Let's just sell some drugs. Go. Cool. Yeah, what you want. You were sleepwalking again. Oh, no. Was I super weird? Yes, you were. Open your eyes. Go back down to your apartment. I'm locking this door. Hey, Ellis. I like my spaghetti sauce really thin. But you like really thick sauce. Hey, Ellis. Can I ask you something? There's something I need to know. Do you poop spaghetti sauce, or do you pee it? Yikes, that is weird. Huh. Don't bother. I already tried. Doesn't say anything except some bullshit about someone's piss smell like ragu. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. I promise. No more sleepwalking. Ever again. You are a motherfucker. Hey, Ellis. What's the difference between banging pussy and smashing that pussy? What? Oh, I could fuck with this one. All right, cool. So when you're banging a bitch, it's just like, you know, the basics, pump and slow. But smashing, mm, you're going to need a woman with some meat. You're going to want that girl harder. Where the fuck are you going? Oh, God. What the fuck just happened? Well, you just fell down the stairs. You okay? No, I shit myself. Does it smell like spaghetti? Hello, my name is James Rugburn and this is the bathroom at Pine Vinyl. I'm co-owner of this place, and we were just named coolest record shop in the Twin Cities by City Pages, but that's not why you're here. You have a toilet that won't stop running. Today I'm going to show you how to stop your toilet from running. Step one, break its legs. Won't run very fast after that, right? <laughs> just kidding, obviously. 
no one likes a loud toilet, and I'm going to show you three ways to stop that leak once and for all. Hey, no budding in line. Oh, wait. That's Prince. Look, it's Prince. Look at that. Oh, my God. It's Prince. Prince. Oh, my God. I'm Prince, so I know I'm in. Plus, I'm a Jehovah. Come on in. Where is he? He? You mean God? No, not him. Oh, I see. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, we're having so much fun. Look, oh, look oh who it is. Look, it's Prince. Oh my God, Prince it's Prince. here. Oh, come on. You'll need three tools. A flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a cut cutter plier snipper thing. The first problem you may be experiencing is a flapper chain that's just too long. Although being too long is usually awesome, when it comes to the inner workings of a toilet, it can be a real deal breaker. Or should I say, seal breaker. <laughs> the flapper needs to form a solid seal, right here. But if a flapper chain is too long, it will prevent the rubber from hitting the surface and creating the shut-off the toilet needs to stop running. Easy way to fix this is to take your clipper snipper thing and bob at the chain about three lengths. But be careful not to make it too short. I can't believe it. It's really over. Man, I was sure the bank was going to give us more time. Guess I need to find me a job then. Damn it! There's got to be a way we can save the record store. Come on, think! Well, I have an idea, but I didn't want to pull it out unless it, it was a back-against-the-wall kind of shit. Okay, but... what's the plan? Any plan will do. we got to save the record store. we got to save Pine Vinyl. All right. First, we need to stop someplace. Cut across Lindell and head up Franklin real quick. Okay. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Hey, Steve Buscemi, you just rear-ended my car. My name is Corey, and I had the right away. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? You drove into the ass of my car. You jabbed on your brakes. Oh, so you're stupid and a liar. Because otherwise, you'll be creating a gap between the ring and the rubber. That'll be too big. And it will cause the toilet... <laughs> oh, God damn it. Oh, God. Oh, Oh, my leg is fucked. God damn it. Oh. What's going on in here? I heard a woman scream. Help me up. I think I broke my leg and uh, possibly my wrist. Why are you trying to bang the toilet? No, I was fixing the toilet. Why are you filming yourself? I was making a how-to video. Oh, I saw one of them YouTube ones with like a million views. Thought I could get some ad revenue or something. Oh. But you don't know how to fix shit. Didn't I not just say I watched a video, asshole? Well, help me up. I can't even put any pressure on it. Watch out. I gotta piss. Don't you fucking dare. Yeah, you're right. I'll use the bathroom up in my apartment. Later, alligator. What? No. Don't leave. Help me up. God, son of a bitch. Now what the fuck am I supposed to do? Hey, who's there? Hey, Rubburn. Why are you trying to bang the toilet? DJ, yes, ha <laughs> Good one, you know me, a real perv, huh? Hey, buddy, hey, can you help me up? I got stuck here, as you can see. <laughs> Ellis told me not to help you up. Who gives a fuck what Ellis says? I'm your boss. He's my boss, too, and he told me if I don't help you up, he'll buy me a Nintendo Switch. Sounds like a real sweet deal you arranged for yourself, huh? Well, guess what, you stupid asshole? If you don't help me up, I'll fire you from underneath this goddamn toilet. You can't fire me. I'm a union. You're a union? You mean in a union? I'm a... I'm union. You can't fire me. DJ, you're not in a union. I am too. Last week I took a big bite out of one. Huh? You took a big... a big bite out of what? A bite out of a union. Sweet Jesus on the cross. Are you talking about an onion? Yeah, I took a bite out of an onion. Well... A union is a group of workers joining together to fight the corporate elite for better wages and work conditions. An onion is a fucking vegetable invented to ruin whoppers. Help me up or pack up your shit. Ellis told me not to. You're fired. Get out. Termination. Effective immediately. Don't listen to him, DJ. You're not fired. Oh, Ellis, you're still here. Good. I hope it burn in hell. Well, that's always a possibility. 
DJ and I are going to run to Burger King. You want anything? No. Are you sure? Uh, give me the usual. <clears throat> Whopper, meal, no onions, smelly yellow for the drink. I'm sorry, did you say extra onions? No, oh, I forgot to fuck you up, man. Cool. Oh, Mind if we take me your car? Out of here. Get me out of here. Thanks, man. Back in an hour or so. Keep an eye on the store, will you? I'm gonna fuck you up. I was accelerating into the flow of traffic. Yeah, while under the influence of marijuana. Uh, what'd you say? You and your friend are high from smoking marijuana. Hey, Ellis, look, here's a racist. Uh, we are not high, so stay in your fucking lane, pal. Hey, why are you filming this? My YouTube channel, What the Fuck Street Fights, is up to 12,000 subs and growing. So what I do is I just wait for fights. And there's gonna be one real quick. See, that's the problem with your generation. You're just fucking around. Don't you have a job? Shut up, man. I'm one of his subscribers. I love what the fuck street fights. I watch that shit all the time. I can't wait to watch him beat the shit out of you. Oh, yeah, right. This fucking twist tie couldn't beat the shit out of a tuna sandwich. I'm calling the police. I'm being violently threatened by a drug addict. Oh, give me a break. You rear-ended my car. I'm a no-fault. Minnesota law clearly states. Cops will be here any second. Good. I'm going to tell them the truth. They're bringing a pot breathalyzer. That's not even a real thing yet, you fucking nerd face. Hey, look, the cops. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. What the fuck, dog? You shot me, motherfucker. You shot me in the shoulder. Oh, motherfuck. You better have that body cam on, motherfucker. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's on. Click. So, uh, what seems to be the problem here? I'm the only black motherfucker in this whole place and you shot me, bitch. Ah, uh, he's gonna keep going with it. <laughs> Alright, here's what we have to do. Here, before we get too sidetracked, though, I just want to report that this uh, piece of shit ran into my car, rear-ended me. He can't even remember what happened because he's so drugged up right now. Is that true? Are you guys on drugs? Is that why I shot that black guy? No, nah, motherfucker, you shot me because you're a bad cop and you're a racist, motherfucker. Anyone call an ambulance? Yeah, yeah, I will. Let me just get the pot breathalyzer first. Wait, for real? Thanks to the wonderful video evidence supplied by WTF Street Fights, which is a big, big hit in our house, we are able to rule in your favor, Mr. Ellis Griggs. The city is very sorry for your inconvenience. For your trouble, we will reward you a cash settlement of $185,000. And again, we are... Sorry for shooting you. Here's all the money pine vinylos. Give me our keys back. Bitch! Open for business. Man, Ellis, that was one hell of a plan. Risky. Really risky, but wow. You pulled it off. Yep, pulled it off. I took a bullet. Guess what? I'm your boss now. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm. Oh, I gotta get out of here. Oh. Hey, Spaz Attack. What are you doing? Trying to bang the toilet? Who the fuck is that? Who are all... What are you making? A toilet porno? Hipster Carol, is that you, you worthless cockstain? Hey, your toilet's running. You better get that fixed, huh? Your mom should have gotten fixed, you fucking clown. Yeah, clever retort there, huh? Ellis wanted me to ask you if you wanted any vegetables for my rooftop vegetable garden. When I get out of here, I'm going to burn down your apartment building and shit on every fucking plant you ever planted, you egg-shaped bearded twat. So was that a no on the vegetables? Because Ellis said you're really hoping for a big bag. Big bag of onions. I get the fucking joke. I'm not a complete idiot. Yeah, that's not how it appears from this angle. <laughs> that's it. I'm getting out of here and beating the ever-loving shit out of you, you fucking hipster. Sounds good, Spaz Attack. Hope you and your toilet girlfriend will be happy together. Oh, and be sure to conserve energy. What the fuck? Oh, that mole face fucker turned the lights off. I gotta get out of here. There's gotta be a way. Wait, what? Who, who's there? Yeah, just me again. Hey, I forgot why I came in here before. <laughs> I need to ease on down the road. Oh, what the hell does that mean? Ease on down the road? Oh, you bastard, you're referencing the whiz. You better not. Might be tough without the lights, but, you know, uh, I'll give it a shot, right? Uh, uh, no, stop! You're, uh. Oh, you have no idea how I'm going to whoop your ass. You have no idea this is going to be the end of you. 
Oh, it smells like asparagus flavored yeast infection. You are a vegetarian fuckstick. Stop, oh, damn it. Oh, get me out of here. Almost done. Just hold on. Oh. All right, where's the handle? <laughs> Here's the flush right here. Here, I suppose you'd like the lights on, huh? In a while, crocodile. Fuck you, you fucker. You fucker. Oh, please, please, God, get me out of here. Please, God, get me out of here. Oh. Hey. Wait a minute. It's quiet. No leak. And that's how you fix a toilet. I hope you found this video helpful, and be sure to subscribe. My name is James Rugburn reporting. I'm here to read you the review for Greta Van Fleet, their album Anthem of the Peaceful Army, as reviewed by Pitchfork. Holy shit, you're gonna go nuts. Uh, they ranked it, by the way, spoiler alert, 1.6 out of 10. 1.6. Are you ready? Put on your boots, because this is fucking weird. Greta Fan Fleet sound like they did weed exactly once. Call the cops and try to record a Led Zeppelin album before they arrested themselves. That's how it starts. The poor kids from Frankenmuth, Michigan, don't even realize they're more of an algorithmic fever dream than an actual rock band. See, you see where this is going? While they're, se while they're selling out shows all over the world, somewhere in a boardroom, a half dozen people are figuring out just how exactly Jimmy Page and Robert Plant are supposed to fit into the SUV with the rest of the Greta Van Fleet boys on carpool karaoke. That's not a bad line, but fucking what is wrong with you, man? This The writer's name is Jeremy D. Larson. Jeremy Larson, he's the senior editor of a pitchfork, I guess. Just look at this photo. Brothers Jake and Sam Kizga, I don't know how to say their name yet, on guitar and bass, are both wearing hippie costumes they 3D printed off the internet. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? If they're 3D printed, they'd look like Devo. Greta Van Fleet is all costume, and if things that look like another thing is your thing, get ready to throw your lighters up for a band whose guiding principle seems to be reading the worst Grand Funk Railroad songs as if they were religious texts. Now you're going to rip the Grand Funk. Look, I'm not going to sit here and defend them, but d what happened to you? What happened in your life? Though their debut album anthem of the Peaceful Army sounds like a bona fide classic rock record with its fuzzy bass, electric sitar, solos, and lyrics featuring the kind of self-actualized transcendence brought on by a few too many multivitamins. It's not actually classic rock. Why you keep poking at them? Like, multivitamins? You're saying that they're like kids? Oh, God, please don't let rock bands be filled with young people. Jesus Christ, let's keep them old. Let's. It, what's Mark Knopfler doing? What is he up to now? They are the kind new kind of vampiric, vampiric band. Fuck you, who, who's there to catch the runoff of original classic rock using streaming services, data driven business model? Greta Van Fleet exists to be swallowed into the algorithms churn and rack up plays of which they already have hundreds of millions. They make music that sounds exactly like Led Zeppelin and demand very little other than forgetting how good Led Zeppelin often were. So he starts mentioning streaming services. This dude is on a fucking rampage. He hates the way music's heard now. He hates this band. He hates fun. He hates life. Fuck him. Um, it's possible to be an exceptional classic rock vampire act. And this is the second time he used vampire. He's so fucking clever. But it requires something more than the major label money and vaguely Native American actraments. I can't say that word. It's why Greta Van Fleet can't compete with, say, the darkness. I'm not going to read you the rest of that paragraph. He just starts sucking off the darkness for some God knows reason. They care so deeply and are so precious with their half-baked boomer fetishism. They molly, they molly coddled every impulse of late sixties rock and roll into an interminable forty-nine minute drag. A, I just heard the album. It's fun. It's fun as shit. There's riffs all over. Yeah, they sound just like Led Zeppelin. 
they sound just like Led Zeppelin. Who gives a shit? Isn't that kind of a fun thing to think about? Some new Led Zeppelin songs? Jesus Christ, we're not giving them our fucking souls here. We're just enjoying some rock and roll. And at least Ze Zeppelin knew to separate their sweet lady I'm horny songs from their howling about literary fantasy songs. Hilariously, Greta Van Fleet combined them into one on The Cold Wind. That song is actually pretty cool. Where the narrator, who is dying, begs his sweet mama to take the family ox, I guess, to town to sell it. Then, mid-ox transaction, this happens, the, and then he quotes this line, The Yankee peddler bargains with you on his way. Whoa, sweet mama's gotten herself a new dress. That's not that bad a line, asshole. That's funny, but it's not supposed to be funny, because Greta Van Fleet do not possess self-awareness at all. How the fuck do you know? How the fuck do you know? When asked about a characteristically ugg lyric, he wrote ugg, by the way, all my brothers who stand up for the peace of the land, that's the line he just quoted as being shit. Jack resp Jake responded in part, I guess it's subject to interpretation, but I think the initial idea with that was, as brothers, we stand for the peace of land, and that was for the good of earth and for man. Ignoring that this is basically a gag and spinal tap, a much better answer would have speak to the spirit of the music they are trying to capture would be, I don't know, who gives a shit? So the artist gives a thoughtful answer, and this joyless nut cup is having none of it. None of it. The back half of the album alternates between the ignorable and the unforgivable, from what is a somewhat fun stomper, Mountain of the Sun, to what should never be, The New Day features Josh singing about watching a child grow in a garden, seeing her bloom so she can be a woman soon. None of this lysergic sexual thinking is within the band's grasp. They are just swatting at crusty platitudes and cold-pasting old mythos, hoping no one notices that they are too small, too inept to even put forth one meaningful, specific, original idea. Wow. But for as a... But for as retro as Anthem of the Peaceful Army may seem, in actuality, it is the future. It's proof of concept that in the streaming and algorithm economy, here he goes again about this fucking algorithm, a band doesn't need to really capture the past. You know what? Fuck the rest of this. Gibson Guitars is going to go out of business. Kids aren't playing guitars anymore. Hmm, I wonder why. Because this is what they read. Bullshit. That punishes them for wanting to have some fucking fun. Pitchfork is killing music. Pitchfork is why Donald Trump is president. Pine Vinyl. 